So you're now allowed to talk to the press. Yes. And you're now allowed to uh, share things on social media. Can we expect more all season long? 100%. One thing that I do on every show that I've done is to take a lot of behind the scenes pictures. I take pictures that um, me as a fan would like to see and that I know that other fans would like to see. They're different than the professional ones. Um, so follow me and I will release stuff after every episode. Uh, I'll dump a lot of stuff and it's going to be fun. It's going to be cool. We're going to have a post track talking show, uh, which I've been helping out on. That is going to be super informative. Everyone's going to be really involved. We're going to tell stories. We're going to tell war stories. There's going to be a lot of stuff to do. What can you tell us about the, uh, uh, the show, the after show? The after show will feature actors from the show, writers from the show, celebrity guests that are fans of Star Trek. We will talk about um, the episode. We will talk about things that we love about Trek, and we'll talk about things that are coming up on Trek. Um, but we're also going to feature people who are behind the scenes pe people, like Neville, who did makeup effects, and we're just going to we're going to make it be a show that we think fans will really respond to. So what was your reaction when you saw our report about Jonathan Frakes spilling the beans on the Mirror Universe episode? It's a long season and a lot of different things happen. So uh, but are there any areas, I guess, are there any areas of Star Trek that you guys aren't going to touch on? I mean, there's so many of this. Time travel, transporter accident, there's so many tropes. Have there, is there a list you have of saying, these are things we're never going to do? Uh, there is a list, and I won't share it. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Um, just one question. Which show, is there a particular challenge in maintaining canon with... Star Trek Enterprise. I believe either you or Aaron. Explain what that, what you mean by that. Uh, Enterprise did a lot of scrambling and covering and patching up things, um, which I think worked very well for their show. It's hard to be in the middle of that show in TOS. Uh, so Kirsten Beyer will probably tell you that the most arguments she and I have had have been me saying, wait, we can't do that because of something to Enterprise? But we respect that. Uh, Enterprise is canon, and it's it's tough, and it's it was a constantly shifting show. But I think um, what I'm really proud of is that this show stands on its own. It fits into canon. Maybe the sets look a little different. Maybe the props look a little different. Technology has changed. But that's what Star Trek is. Star Trek is about evolving and adapting and showing what's happening in, in the world and adapting new technology. Now I know you're also a big Star Wars fan including Star Wars Rebels um, and like, for example recently they ended up canonizing certain things like they brought in Thrawn right obviously you're such a nerd um, so there's a lot of non-canon Star Trek out there. There's a lot of books. In fact, there's a book that I guess all the designers are sharing about the Klingons from the 80s. Do you think, and then there's the animated series, of course. So have you guys considered dipping into non-canon Star Trek and bringing it to the screen? I think we consider everything on the board, but um, the most exciting thing that I'm excited about, hopefully moving into a season two, is We've set up our own ship and our own crew and a couple of ships, and it'd be real nice to tell new stories and keep going places where no one's gone before as opposed to just revisiting things. So um, my, my instinct is always to just come up with new ideas. What, what, what exactly is the USS Discovery? I mean, does it, is it some kind of experimental ship? Does it run on mushrooms? I mean, what's going on with that ship? It's just kind of weird. It is kind of weird, but it's also really cool. And next week, everyone's totally going to understand what it is. So it's going to be so cool, and it is such a major component of what Episode 3 is, uh, in particular. Um, to spoil that would be a real... A real well, I, I, I didn't mean to spoil it, but you know, in the original series and the other series, the ships tend to be, you know, it's one Constitution-class ship. 
is the Discovery its own class? Is it, it's, it's a special, unique ship. It has a unique mission. Or, you know, is it just part of Starfleet? It is both a unique ship and part of Starfleet. So it is not a Discovery class, and you'll find that out as well. But um, it is a very interesting ship that is a um, is going to open a lot of doors creatively and story-wise for us that you'll see unfold in a really, really cool way.